One of the hardest things in landscape photography is when you wake up earlier than you ever imagined you would have to wake up when you started this hobby, this passion. And you look outside and it's dark, it's wet, and it's cold. And making the decision as to whether or not you should get out of your warm, cozy bed, go out into the inhospitable, freezing cold wilderness and try and capture photographs. That's where a lot of people fail and that's where a lot of people fall down. But I always say you have to be in it to win it and this morning when we all woke up in the dark, dingy room and we looked outside and it was raining and miserable, half the group said they were staying in bed. Yet we were encouraged by a couple of the members of group and myself to get up and go out because we're here anyway. And what a decision that was. It is absolutely glorious. It has stopped raining. The clouds have parted. We are above the weather. And it's fantastic. The group are over there getting some amazing shots, glorious colours, beautiful compositions. Actually, as I speak, the mist is starting to roll in. That's fine. Not a bad thing. Lots of atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous and well worth the effort of getting out of our warm, cosy beds this morning. So I've just run over to the guys here to join in and take a photograph and I was absolutely devastated because I got here, set my camera up, looked up and there was nothing. Zero visibility. I thought this is just typical. Um, but as, as is always in the mountains, the mist cleared as quickly as it came and now we have this stunning view and it's all about this continuation of ridge lines. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine maybe. Well no, about six but the clouds in between, the low clouds and the colour and the atmosphere is absolutely gorgeous. I have my long lens out, I'm shooting well, about 200mm give or take. At the minute I have it on a 169 crop preview but I could change that to a nice square or something. And it's just gorgeous. Um, don't really know what else to say. So the mist has rolled back in, although we still have gorgeous views all around us. But I think we've all got what we came for and we're happy. So I can't see my watch, but I know it's time for breakfast. So we're going to head down, have some food. And then that is us done with this beautiful, beautiful location. Oh, and I've just walked in somebody's photograph. Um, so we were up on the mountain this morning where it was much colder, you know, really cold and damp. And now we've come down into the valley, it's incredibly humid. So we are having a few camera issues, just fogging up lenses, fogging up mirrors and sensors. Um, so we have to hang around for a bit of acclimatization. Now I've never been to Lauterbrunnen before. Um, now it's beautiful, we're surrounded by these amazing dramatic cliffs and these fantastic, I don't know if it looks like granite or limestone, I'm not sure, but we are surrounded by a ginormous cliffs, shrouded in cloud, it looks phenomenal, huge big walls, fantastic for photography. Now this is just a quick stop before lunch, we're having a bit of a play with our long lenses, picking out detailed compositions, because there's nothing to be had with a wide lens, you can see we're in a car park, we're on a road, there's people, the lighting's not very good. But just using a long lens and picking out fine details, you can get some actually quite nice images. I spotted a tree right, 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 right up on the top of the ridge that was shrouded in cloud. Well, the surrounding area of the tree was shrouded in cloud, but the tree itself wasn't. 
I thought it worked really nicely because the tree is a fantastic subject, an obvious subject. Throw in the, the texture and the detail of the rock and the atmosphere of the cloud and you have a fantastic image. Focus on the tree, 200 mil, F11. And you know, you can make 10 of those images just from this one spot using a long lens. It's all about looking and seeing and trying things out. And because the clouds are moving so fast and everything's so volatile, new compositions come and go all of the time. So actually, this is a great way to spend an hour before lunch. Oh, it's cold, but how often do you get the opportunity to swim in the foothills of the Matterhorn? So we've arrived at this beautiful lake, iconic lake, where you get an undisrupted view of the Matterhorn, which is just there. It's gorgeous it's a bit breezy at the minute so there's no reflections but we are really we still have to go and uh, get sorted at our mountain hut but we're just going to take some time enjoy the scenery and enjoy the beautiful alpine view <laughs> So after a cold but beautiful swim in the Alpine Lake, we've reached our hut, we're having a nice cold beer, dinner's on its way, and then we're gonna go and shoot sunset in the mountains with the Matterhorn. And I have to say that none of this would be possible if it weren't for Vagabond Expeditions. Just saying. I mean, in like So we're just having dinner in the Fluap hut in Switzerland and the waiter came over and handed this to the table. Now this is a bottle of wine with a letter addressed to Thomas Heaton, which is me, and Jonas Porel, which is there, in the Vagabond Expedition hat, link in bio. And yeah, someone has like left a letter and I'm gonna read this to you, hang on. Do you mind? <laughs> to Thomas and Jonas. Thank you for the inspiration. Enjoy the wine. I hope you get the shot, a shot, your shot, while you're up here. Looking forward to seeing your take on one of my hometown locations, Paul. So thank you so much, Paul, for sending this wine. I had no idea. He was here three days ago. So yeah, this is amazing. So yeah, thank you so much. We will drink this and we will enjoy it. So we've had dinner, the hut were very kind and gave us an early dinner, which means we can make it down to the lake for sunset. Now I have to stress actually, and obviously I've mentioned this to the group, the Matterhorn here from this location, from this lake, is not a sunset location. It really isn't. In fact, it's gonna be incredibly challenging. Once the sun drops below the horizon and we come into the blue hour, then it's gonna be more manageable. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. We're gonna stay, possibly do some night sky photography as well. But really, this, this is a sunrise location. So this is an opportunity to scout out compositions, shoot some nice blue hour images, 
come back tomorrow morning and hopefully we'll have the glorious Alpen glow. Also, we didn't drink that wine. We're gonna save that for later on this evening. Once again, thank you so much to Paul, whoever you are, Paul. It's an incredibly thoughtful gift and very, very unexpected and well received. Ah, anyway, onwards and upwards. Okay, so we're at the lake now, and as suspected, it was horrible because of the backlight, but the sun's dropped now, and you can see the peak here, actually, you can see the reflection, and there's this fantastic streak of light just coming over the top half of the Matterhorn. Now, there's not much interest in the sky, it's not the best photo in the world, but it's really rather quite nice, and you can see the lake is now starting to settle. We're getting the reflections. I've got my camera set up just here, reflections here. Oh, it's fantastic. This entire scene has changed because of the addition of this one cloud just here, which has made the whole scene far more interesting than it was just a few minutes ago. So rather than going for a square crop, I'm going for a 4-5 crop focusing on the mountain, but I've put the mountain on the right third, cloud on the left third with a very subtle reflection. And it's just beautiful. It truly is gorgeous with the light. The light isn't catching the peak, but the light is catching the atmosphere level with the peak, which is giving the illusion of light on the peak. And it's, uh, yeah, it's turned into a perfect evening. So that's it, I think I'm super surprised. I'm really happy with how this evening went because when I arrived here, it was busy. The light was terrible, <laughs> like awful, really bad. Um, but then it just develops in that one cloud. My God, if it wasn't for that single cloud, I don't think any of us would have left anywhere near as happy as we are now. So one image from this evening, a beautiful, fantastic, and it was all because of that single cloud which just added balance, composition, interest to everything. As you can tell, I'm really happy with that single cloud. Uh, it's getting dark now that the sun has set. We're going to stick around and shoot some night photography. Uh, I'm not going to film it, it's a logistical nightmare, um, and I don't expect to get any groundbreaking images myself, but I'm sure these guys will. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to end it here. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I've certainly enjoyed making it. And yeah, tune in next time where I'll be shooting sunrise at the Matterhorn. We'll be doing a lot more hiking in the area. And yeah, hopefully a lot more photography to come. So yeah, until next time, bye for now.